Call the Tanchapahoe Parish Board meeting to order this February the 2nd. Roll call, Miss Cindy. Miss Richards. Mr. Toller. Here. Miss Abrams. Here. Mr. Westmoreland. Present. Mr. Duncan. Here. Mr. Bush. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Miss Simmons. Here. Ms. Dominguez. Present. All right, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Bush, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, I will. May I stand? Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will. Move to item C, consider approval of board minutes of January 19th, 2021. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept. Ms. Dominguez makes a motion. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Westmoreland. <clears throat> Roll call, Ms. Cindy. I'm, I'm sorry. Online voting, voting is open. <laughs> Online voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to board action. Consider approval of the proclamation declaring February 1st through the 5th, 2021 as National School Counselor Week. Mm -hmm. Ms. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Uh, we'd ask the board tonight to approve this proclamation and I would like to read it publicly in honor of our school counselors and all of our schools. National School Counseling Week Proclamation. Whereas school counselors are employed in public and private schools to help students reach their full potential, and whereas school counselors are actively committed to helping students explore their abilities and strengths, interests, and talents, and that these traits relate to career awareness and development, and whereas school counselors help parents focus on ways to further the educational, personal, and social growth of their children. And whereas school counselors work with teachers and other educators to help students explore their potential and set realistic goals for themselves. And whereas school counselors seek to identify and utilize community resources that can enhance and complement comprehensive school counseling programs and help students become productive members of society. And whereas comprehensive de developmental school counseling programs are considered an integral part of the educational process that enables all students to achieve success in school. Therefore, we, the Tanshima Parish School Board, do here, hereby proclaim February the 1st through the 5th of 2021 as National School Counseling Week. Can I get a motion? To I'll make a motion this? that we declare this week. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Westmoreland. Online voting, Miss Cindy? Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Our last item on the agenda is consider approval to send the resolution from the Tanchebo Parish School Board to the Educational Facilities Improvement Board seeking support for additional revenue to provide competitive salaries to all employees. Thank you, Ms. President. Madam President, before we do that, I did want to just point out that Mr. Verboys, who uh, is one of the volunteers who serves on that board uh, is here with us tonight, and I wanted to thank him for being here with us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Madam President. The resolution reads, a resolution of the Parish School Board of the Parish of Tangibahoa, State of Louisiana, stating that the school board's approval and endorsement of the calling and holding of an election 
in the Educational Facilities Improvement District of the Parish of Tangipahoa, State of Louisiana, on April 24, 2021, to authorize the levy and collection of a one-half of 1% 1 sales tax for a period of 15 years beginning July 1st, 2021, to be dedicated and used for the purpose of assisting the Parish School Board of the Parish of Tangipahoa, State of Louisiana, in providing additional salaries and benefits to teachers and support workers of the parish-wide school district of the Parish of Tangipahoa, State of Louisiana, and further providing for other matters in connection therewith. Whereas this parish school board of the parish of Tangipahoa, state of Louisiana, has a vision for excellence for the public school system in Tangipahoa Parish, the parish-wide school district of the parish of Tangipahoa, state of Louisiana, and whereas this school board has adopted a strategic plan outlining specific actions to address the challenges that stand in the way of academic excellence and the experiences that children and their families have within the school system and finds that the teachers and support workers directly affect the quality of education provided in the school system through instruction, academic programs, and support operations, and whereas this school board understands that it ranks third in the state of Louisiana for ensuring that all school systems revenues are spent in the classroom to help educate children and that the school system and that its staff digitally pursues all available state and federal grant funding sources to enhance educational opportunities in the school system and whereas this school board finds that the school system is one of the least funded school systems in the state with regard to local tax support and that the school system's current first year pay for classroom teachers is ranked eighth among the following 10 neighboring parishes. St. James Parish, 49,909. Jefferson Parish is two, 4,000 even. Ascension Parish is third, 45,863. East Baton Rouge Parish is ranked fourth, 45,500. St. Tammany Parish is ranked fifth at 45,300. St. John Parish is ranked sixth at 45,118. Livingston Parish is ranked seventh at 43,317. Tangipahoa Parish is ranked eighth at 42,000 even. Washington Parish is ranked ninth at 39,000 even, and St. Tammany Parish is ranked 10th at $38,700. St. Helena. St. Helena. St. Helena, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Whereas this school board has determined that an immediate, comprehensive, and sustained effort must be made to increase employee salaries in order to improve the school system's competitiveness when recruiting and retaining the most effective teachers, and dedicated support employees in the school system, and that the school system does not currently have sufficient reoccurring revenue sources to achieve that outcome. Whereas to address the challenges facing the school system described above, the Board of Directors of the Educational Facility Improvement District of the Parish of Tangipahoa, State of Louisiana, acting as the governing authority of the Educational Facility Improvement District of the Parish of Tangipahoa, State of Louisiana, are expected to adopt a resolution on February 3, 2021, ordering and calling a special election to be held in the Educational Facility Improvement District of the Parish of Tangipahoa, State of Louisiana, on April 24, 2021, for the purpose of authorizing the levy and collection of a one-half, 1% 1 sales tax for a period of 15 years beginning July 1, 2021, to be dedicated and used for the purpose of assisting the school board in providing additional salaries and benefits to teachers and support workers of the school system. Whereas the calling of the election is subject to the approval of the State Bond Commission and is made under the, and pursuant to the authority conferred by Article 6, Section 30 of the Constitution of the State of Louisiana of 1974 as amended 
and the applicable provisions of Chapter 5 and Chapter 6A of Title 18 of the Louisiana Revised Statutes of 1950, as amended, Act 1460 of the regular session of the 1997 Louisiana State Legislature, and Act 422 of the regular session of the 2019 Louisiana State Legislature, codified at Louisiana Revised Statute 33 colon 2740 period 37, and other constitutional and statutory authority, a copy of which is on file with this school board. Whereas, the estimated revenues generated annually on by a one-half of 1% 1 sales tax are $12,500,000 and would allow the school system to increase first-year teacher pay to $45,000 a year and to provide opportunities to provide additional performance pay incentives based on student growth and teacher effectiveness. And whereas, if the proposed tax is passed by voters and levied by the district, the school system staff estimates that the state will increase MFP funding to the school system by approximately $5.6 million, allowing the school system to, one, address the social, emotional needs of students by decreasing the number of students in each classroom, two, provide before and after school programs to address student learning loss and assist working families, three, expand access to early childhood opportunities for children, four, expand career pathways including STEM and credentialing opportunities for high school students to prepare them for the workforce, five, expand music, art, and foreign foreign language programs in our elementary schools. Whereas this school board approves and endorses the calling and holding of the election on April 24, 2021, as more fully set forth in the district's resolution and desires that this resolution be construed to meet the requirements of Article 6, Section 15 of the Louisiana Constitution of 1974, as amended in Section 1415, of Title 33 of the Louisiana Revised Statutes of 1950, as amended to extend such laws are applicable. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the school board as a governing authority of the school system that Section 1, this school board is he hereby approves and endorses the district's calling and holding of an election on April 24, 2021 to authorize the levy and collection of a one-half of 1% 1 sales tax therein for a period of 15 years beginning July 1, 2021 to be dedicated and used for the purpose of assisting this school board in providing additional salaries and benefits to teachers and support workers of the school system in the manner conferred by Article 6, Section 30 of the Constitution of the State of Louisiana of 1974 and amended as EFID Act, the election code, and other constitutional and statutory authority as more fully set forth in the district resolution. Section 2. In the event the foregoing proposition passes to the extent required by law, the approval, consent, and authority of this school board are hereby granted to the district to levy and collect the proposed tax described in Section 1 hereof. Section 3. This approval is granted in compliance with the provisions of Article 6, Section 15 of the Louisiana Constitution of 1974 as amended, and Section 1415 of Title 33 of the Louisiana Revised Statute of 1950 as amended, to the extent such laws are applicable. Section 4. This resolution shall take effect immediately. Move to adopt the resolution. We have a motion. We have a second. second. No. Mr. Westmoreland, second. <clears throat> Call for a vote, Miss Cindy. Question. What, just, Question. Yeah. Just real quick, could you run back through, or Mr. Duncan, you may be able to run back through the steps that we go from here as far as going back to the committee and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first was just to let the board know that. This, the idea of this resolution came up kind of out of the discussion with the district members. Um, they wanted to have something from us as a school board, you know, indicating 
the, the direction that we wanted them to go. They also um, like, would, wanted to have um, you know, something from us committing that if they agreed to call this election that we were committed to using the tax revenue solely for the purpose of uh, additional support for salaries of our employees. And then finally, they asked the question related to the MFP funds and wanted a, a commitment from us on you know, how we would use that extra revenue. And so the idea was that we could adopt this resolution to send to them uh, that addressed all three of those, those things. Um, I think particularly beneficial uh, is the commitment from us, well, no, I mean, certainly on, the, on how to use the tax revenue, but I think we've already made that commitment. But, you know, this is new information, I think really just now being released to the public r related to how we would intend to use that extra $5.6 million in MFP funds, which um, is things that I think m many parents in our district will find very attractive, the, the, the notion that we would decrease class size, um, have after-school programs, uh, increase, um, I guess, pre-K programs, STEM uh, and credentialing programs and foreign language programs, as well as art and music. Um, so, you know, that makes this upcoming tax election about more than just increasing salaries. It, it, it also uh, will place on the ballot, essentially, um, all of those, those programs that have been proposed. Where we go from here is that the, the district, the facilities, the Educational Facilities Improvement District has uh, its meeting tomorrow where they will review um, this resolution along with an, a lot of other information that they requested at their last meeting. Uh, and all of that is, a, 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 and I appreciate the administration for getting all of that together, um, but it's all of, also available to, to this board um, on board docs. They'll review all of that and then consider the adoption of a resolution that actually calls the election. Uh, so that will take place tomorrow, the official vote on calling the election. Uh, from there, the Bond Commission will have a meeting early, next, early this month, I believe, um, to authorize us actually placing it on the ballot. Uh, and then we will have our election on April the 24th. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Ms. Andrew? Would you bring up that list of what we hope to uh, uh, spend the money on? No, yeah, a little further. Okay, the number three, expanding the childhood opportunities. Does that mean we'll have more of those in our system than we have now? Yeah. Which will. So uh, the goal is to have more three and four year old. Mm -hmm. um, we work with partnering agencies like um, private day daycares and stuff for three-year-old classes, mm -hmm. but also expanding the number of pre-K four-year-olds that we have in our public system. And of course, it's still going to be based, though, on e economic needs and not always. We have a we have a variety of funding sources, and so we braid funds to try to meet the needs of the children that are applying to get in. Okay. Oh, go ahead, yeah, Mr. Thank you, uh, Rob. Mr. Snodham, I have a couple of questions about um and i don't know if this is ever going to happen with the minimum wage i have i have no idea but i'm looking at a custodian 12 months we pay these people now seventeen thousand three hundred and eighty three dollars after a seven percent pay raise they'll make eighteen thousand and six hundred dollars do, do we know and and i don't know so you can you can teach me something tonight our salary employees are they going to fall underneath if the minimum wage goes to $15 an hour? How does that work? I've looked at our salary schedule, and there's all our custodians are paid less than $15 an hour, even our highest paid custodians. All our lunchroom workers are paid less than $15 an hour, even to the highest paid. So uh, if the minimum wage would go from $7. 50 or 725 to uh, $15, we would need to adjust all those salary schedules for those employees. And that's a lot of employees. We're not talking about yeah. a handful. We're talking quite a few. A have, have you had a chance to uh, no, figure sir. that out number-wise? Uh, a couple of other questions, if you don't mind. I know, I know we had a, um, we, talk, we talked about the comparisons. Why, why in, the, in the, and listen, I understand how, how teachers are important, but this whole, this whole proposal here 
it seems like we pull teachers out of other others other employees is it possible to just say employees because it is a pay raise for everybody I mean it is it is a pay rate we even have the teacher schedule listed in here but in our cafeteria workers our custodians our pairs our nurses you guys aren't we all just as important and so when you talk about a seven percent pay raise and that's what this what we're fixing to try to do why not just either take that section out why did you feel the need to list the teacher salaries in there and nobody else well, i'm going to defer that question to the superintendent Right. So, I mean, we're not saying that other groups are not as important. You know, obviously, it takes everybody working together to educate the children. But on here, we wanted to highlight the teachers in the classroom that work directly with students every day. Um, on this scale, just to illustrate the challenge of, you know, being able to recruit uh, teachers at a competitive salary rate compared to our neighbors. So. We didn't include every category like bus drivers, cafeteria in here, but it is information that we're, we are providing to the, the board, both boards to look at and to uh, see the differences there. And, and, and I'll point out, Mr. And Mr. Bush and I already talked about this. We, we will spend some time on that during our meeting tomorrow to specifically talk about all of those different categories and, and the fact that this will benefit all of those employees well I, I just at this that's the only problem I have with the thing I, I don't see the reason in leaving that in there and not listing everybody else. so I'd like to make a motion Miss president that we just take that little salary schedule the teachers just completely out of this or put everybody else in I mean the wording continues to separate us all and it's a pay increase even I see interviews on action 17 news where people are interviewed and they say a teacher pay raise so the people, you know, some of the bus drivers saying, well, we, are we important? Are we going to pay raise too? I said, yes, it's a 7% pay raise across the board. But this is going out to the public, and it just lists as the teacher. So I'd like to make a motion that we just remove that section of where it says that compare the teacher salaries. And, we, and when we need to compare, and I haven't received a copy, and Mr. Duncan and I talked about this. Now, I'm looking at the salary comparison through the custodians and the cafeteria workers and so forth because I've got it from the from the committee's agenda so can we take that just that one block out until we're ready to give the public the comparison of everybody's salary from top to bottom because we are pushing this as a we're going to be competitive now so how competitive are we with the nurses does anybody know now are competitive with the pairs are competitive with this section of employees so my motion is to if i'm doing it correctly is to just remove one through ten that that comparison of teachers until we can use everybody and put out there a amend, amendment amending thank you until we can give everybody myself included something i can hold in my hand and let me say publicly i am supporting the half cent tax openly but, but i just want to hold my hand to where all of our employees from the bottom to the top realize that you're just as important and we're out there fighting for you because you fight for us every day so my motion is just to remove that, that okay so we let me, can i restate his motion and then i'll second it right. okay mm -hmm. so for the paragraph that he's referring to mr bush if, if you'll allow me would that paragraph would read and actually we have new data i'm a add to your motion if that's okay that uh, we have new data that mr. Schnadelbach just sent to me the other day uh, and it's going to be presented at the the meeting tomorrow and mr. Schnadelbach if you'll confirm this that according to the new data on a per pupil basis we spend the least amount of money from all funds per pupil in 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 revenue Isn't that what you sent me the other day so we're not used to we would have to say that we are the least funded school district in the state as it relates to local funding but we are now the least funded school district in the state when you add up all funding on a per pupil basis that's correct mr duncan we are the least funded school district out of 69 school districts we rank 69 mm. in total funding per student at ten thousand seven hundred and fifty four dollars per student and the state average is fifteen thousand three hundred and eighty two so no other school district in the state of louisiana spends less 
per pupil when you add all of our revenue from all categories now. That's correct. So with that, Mr. Bush, what I would say is that for that paragraph, we would say, whereas this school board finds that the school system is, one of, is, the, is the least funded school system in the state of Louisiana per pupil, and then we would just end it at that point and then move on to the next point. Yes. Couldn't have said it better myself, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> I like it. And let me just say that uh, for the other board members that don't know, uh, Brett and I, has been, he's been sending me some comparisons and we look, we're looking pretty good on, on a lot of these areas for all of our employees with this raise. You we're going to be real competitive. Amendment. So, uh, a bit past this first. Okay, before we make a call on the amendment, I would like to point out something as well. Miss Cindy, can you go down to the MFP, please? Or up, down, yeah. Just for the general public to understand um, where the MFP is, um, where we're gonna spend the, uh, the five things. Yeah, okay, right here, right here, okay. go down. Okay. Come back, right there. I, I just wanted, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Duncan, the MFP $5.6 million is MFP funding that has nothing to do with the half cent sales tax that we're proposing. Right, so these are two separate things, but it, 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 they are related in the sense that we have to pass the half cent sales tax in order for us to receive the extra funding from the state. But the half cent sales tax funds, which will be around 12.5 million, is dedicated and can only be used to increase salaries. These MFP funds, we will be committing with the adoption of this resolution and other things that the administration will bring to us down the road, we will be committing to using those dollars as outlined in this, re in, in this section of the resolution. I just wanted to make sure that the public was clear mm -hmm. that we were not going to be using that half cent sales tax money if it was pa to pass right. to go towards these items. Okay. Right. All right. So we're going to um, call for a motion on the amendment to our uh, proposal. Is it the amendment to the resolution? And do you have the language, Ms. I Jenkins? I do. Uh, motion to approve as amended. The, the no. First, we're just doing a, a vote on the, on the amendment. Right. Whereas this school board finds that the school system is the least funded school system in the state of Louisiana per pupil. Is that correct? I think that's good enough. Is there a better way to say that, Mr. Schnarr? Okay. <laughs> And Ms. Jenkins, I'd like Mr. Duncan to, he made the motion, I'd, I'd second it. Oh, well, that's okay. Cindy, do we have all, all revenue sources in that little uh, resolution that paragraph? Can I just make a large change on this now? Oh, is it in a different section? Yes, under five. No, the one you modified in your motion. No. Cindy, in your motion that you propose to change, does it say all revenue sources? No, it does not. It needs to say all revenue sources. And where would you like that? At the end. Least per funded school system per pupil with uh, in all revenue sources? I think somewhere right, right in that area. Oh, okay. Where I'll pull it up on, sure. Uh, motion to amend the fourth paragraph to read as, whereas this school board finds that the school system is the least funded school system in the state of Louisiana per pupil in all revenue sources. I don't love it, but, but it's good enough. You don't board. love, what do you want it to say? I don't know. <laughs> He's a lawyer, you're not going <laughs> to <it. laughs> I think just, yeah. I mean, I, I like simplicity. Is that too, uh, too wordy? Is it too wordy? Yeah, I would just say we're the least funded school system in the state of Louisiana per people. <clears throat> All right, leave it at that. Okay. Okay. So, and that's going to be Mr. Duncan making the motion, Mr. Bush second it. Okay. Call for a vote, Ms. Cindy, on the amended motion. Okay. Okay. Just one second. Let's uh, take this vote. Let's pull up. Let me reef. Okay, there we go. Online voting is open. Uh, 
think you got to get out of that. There we go. <laughs> Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Now, Miss Miss Rose wanted to discuss it. Yeah, and Miss Stilly has something to add to. Go ahead, yes, Miss Rose. Well, I had spoken to Miss Stilly on the phone about this uh, last week or so. I'm concerned that the wording. We want to make sure that if there is a little bit of land yap above the for the and one half penny above what it takes to give all our current employees their raise that we have money set aside that we can use to hire other people or to put other employees in place not just to increase their salaries i want to make sure that in this wording that it doesn't limit us to only increasing salaries and not increasing employees as needed so does the wording in here justify using if there's more money in the half yeah. penny so two things that we included and there was lots of conversation you know with our team about these five things first of all we feel very i'm sorry we feel very passionate about these five things that are listed here um, they will be part of our strategic plan and, and a lot of the things that we're working on internally. But two things, uh, Ms. Dominguez. One is by decreasing the number of students in a classroom, which is class size. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that could equate to more teachers. And then the second thing is expanding the music, art, and foreign language and like elective type things for students, but particularly in elementary schools, music, art, foreign language. So I think those two items. Um, adds to the staffing in terms of not just pay raises. But will the other line above that constitute adding to uh, staffing as far as any support staff, bus drivers? See, in, in your five things that are included mm -hmm. with the MFP additional funds, if we pass the tax, that's there. But I want to make sure that in the wording, that we're not limiting ourselves to using the other money only for raises and not increasing of so, bus drivers that we desperately need. So I'll try to tackle that if I can. Mm -hmm. can yeah. So, Mr. Dominguez, the place to look as far as the, the truly restrictive language um, on how the, the half cent sales tax money can be used is in the proposition itself um, and so that which is the language that's on the tax call and so that language this is and we did go back and forth about that quite a bit because I, I felt like it was very important that when the voters read this language they are assured that it can only be used for salaries and benefits of our teachers and support workers. So, so there was, we wanted to make sure that length, it was tight enough for that, but then it was also not so restrictive that it created an accounting nightmare. So this is the language we landed on. It says that um, these funds will be dedicated and used for the purpose of assisting the parish school board of the parish of Tangsville State of Louisiana in providing additional salaries and benefits to teachers and support workers of the parish-wide school district of the Tangsville Parish State of Louisiana. So it's providing revenue that is dedicated to salaries and benefits for the school system. It, it doesn't necessarily say current, current employees or whatever. Yeah, so it, but, but it can only be used for supplementing the salaries and benefits of our employees. Just, However many we have. That's, that's good. I just want to okay. make sure it was we weren't locking in to only current employees, right. not that we weren't going to be able to use it for our future employees. Yes, yeah, so I don't, I don't think right. it does that, but it does make it clear that it can only be used for those salaries and benefits. And I, okay. and I guess that's my question, Mr. Duncan. Why, why, did, why do we spell out benefits to teachers and support workers? Is Ron Jenko considered a support worker? Are you a teacher? <clears throat> No, I, <laughs> so you're considered a teacher, teacher or support worker. So what if we just put employee? Would that would that cover I, everybody? I mean, because but well, I would oppose taking the word teacher out of the proposition only because um, 
I think that that's going to be important to our voters, that they see the word teachers and support workers. Um, I understand the sentiment of what's yeah, your question, just, but, but from a, if I'm just going from a purely cynical political perspective, I think that word makes a big difference to, to, to the general voters. Your pay raise says a lot. Yeah. But, that, but that's the only reason. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing. With, you know, my mom was a, one of our school uh, oh, absolutely. My mom ca cafeteria there. workers, and, um, and I think they're just super important. You know, y'all heard me speak to that in the past, but, but from a political perspective, I think our voters want to see that word teachers. And, Ms. President, I have one more thing. Go ahead, Mr. Bush. Mr. Schnall, about what, what is going to happen, say we're blessed and this half cent brings us more than we need. Do we know how much we need for a 7% pay raise? Is it going to be more than twelve and a half million dollars a year? No, it won't be more than twelve and a half. What are we going to do with extra money? Well, um, that's what I'll It's going to be restricted funds that can only be used for paying salaries and benefits. Okay. And now, no, now in the body of the resolution talks about additional stipends for incentivizing teachers. You know, right now in our salary schedule, we have those teachers that are emerging. What are the effectiveness, yeah, effectiveness stipend? We may want to consider, and the board may want to do that, increasing those stipends amount once we know. You know, the sales tax number of 12.5 million is based on the highest, um, which was in October. sales tax dollars we're receiving today. Which was in October, we had over five million, which was a record that we, I think, this past October, right? It was five million. And cumulative were five cumulative million. year to date through December 31st is five million. I'm going to come to y'all with a revised general fund budget reflecting a five million dollar increase in sales tax revenue. Gotcha. But keep in mind, we 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 spent 1.3 million on the salary supplements in December too. But the but the sales tax dollars may go down. Keep that in mind too. Mm, absolutely. So we would record <laughs> the additional sales tax and a special revenue, track that money, and make sure it's spent just for salaries and benefits. One concern that the administration has is this is a 15 year term. When it expires in 15 years, if the voters don't renew it, then since this is supplemental pay, our salary schedules would go back down as if the 7% wasn't included in, in the salaries because the board could not afford without the additional revenue we'll to all continue be gone to pay then, that brother. 7%. <laughs> but we'll, all, we'll all be gone then, brother. But the, 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 the Dr. short Hurst, answer to Mr. Dr. Hurst won't be, so we'll make sure it's there for him. <laughs> but the short answer to, to Mr. Bush's question is that ultimately, once this passes, hopefully, assuming that it does, the administration has to come back to the board with a specific proposal on what our new salary schedules will be. Correct. And our commitment is that we are going to do at least a 7% pay raise for all employees. But if we find out that there's additional money to do something slightly more than that in various categories, that's up to this board to decide exactly what we, we want to do with it. Absolutely. And last thing, and I'm finished, I promise. Board members, and I just want to bring this to our attention. When we gave the $600 increase for Christmas, everybody got $600. But the percentages were much different for everybody. So I like the, I like the extra check to stay at an amount for everybody gets it. Because a lower paid employee has got a higher percentage than the highest paid employees. Here we're giving everybody a 70%. And I know our lower paid employees really appreciated that $600, which some of them were a 10% or bigger raise. And the highest paid guys like, you know, some of, some of our supervisors and Correct. Their, their percentage was much lower. Thank you. Appreciate it. One more question. Um, okay, so this is a resolution that we're sending to our board tomorrow. When you go to the polls, I'm just trying to lay it out there for just everyday lay people. This is not what's going to be on the ballot. <laughs> Ms. Jenkins, can you pull up the actual call? Do you have, if you go to the, um, the no, go to the economic, is it all the way at the bottom? Oh, no, you want If you that? go to the, um, the the Economic Facilities Board meeting, can you go to that? Yeah, can you hold on one sec? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, while she's doing that, I have a question. So, I guess spinning off of what Mr. Uh, Bush said, is there a reason why we could not put in that Section 1 um, teachers, support workers, all employees, something about employees? Because... 
some people have asked me that. Well, what yeah. am, I, am I an employee? What they don't get that they're a support person, or maybe the public. Just, I mean, all employees. It only says teachers and support workers. So if somebody doesn't realize what a support worker is, a nurse is a support worker. Uh, the, like you said, the maintenance is a support worker. The the people who work in central office that are not certified teachers are support workers. So why can't we put employees in there? Instead of support workers, put employees? Is that what you're asking? Or support workers and employees. Something that because people don't get it. You're talking about in the election call? In the section one section in this resolution. Leave teachers in, but also add something else. Because what I'm trying to say is though this resolution, what is in here, is not going to be what the general public sees. Well, right. I know, but... Oh, they see at it. At some point, well, they're going to see this, we, but at some point there, they need to, we need to say employees. Okay, yeah. well, can we come back to that in just a minute? And then. Okay, where is that part? So go, if you'll go all the way to the bottom, Ms. Jenkins. Okay, I'm sorry. Right there, I'm sorry. So this is the what the voters will see uh, on the election call, where it's uh, the word underneath where it says proposition. Um, you got all the legal stuff that the statute requires but then at the bottom is the section that i read earlier that says providing for additional salaries and benefits to teachers and support workers of the parish wide school district of the parish of tanspahoa state of louisiana okay so you're wanting to add support workers and employees Ms. Dominguez? Not to this section. She's please don't make any changes. She's got to roll it a little more, I think, huh? Please don't make any changes to this document. That This has been through lawyers like 15 times. But if you're, if you're talking about the resolution that we're voting on, we can make some changes to that, if, if that's okay. Is that what you're asking about? That was what you I was were. asking about that, but I'm, I'm just like, I know a lot of people will just say, well, they don't know what, why not employees? <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Oh. Yeah, just I understand exactly what everybody's alluding to. I really do, and I, I appreciate. I know they appreciate the fact that we're fighting to make sure it's clear. But how we word the resolution will make very little difference in how it's sold to the public. Yeah, we have to sell it on in our interviews and in our press releases and everything to make it clear what we're doing with this, so that everyone understands. Uh, but you know. We can change one word here and there, and it won't do anything, but what we say to the public will make the biggest difference. Yes, and we, we will make sure that we get to all of our employee groups face-to-face -face and explain as well. You know, I think that's going to help as well, just making sure that they understand it's that it's all everyone. employees. All employees, yes. Yeah, that's for all employees. I mean, I, I don't know. Why did y'all not put employees in there? I mean, I'm getting asked the same question. Am I a support worker? Am I a teacher? Because if you're not certificate, I'm sorry. If you're not a certificated teacher, then you're a support employee. Mm -hmm. That's that's the difference. You're, you're either one or the other. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not they understand that, I, I'm not sure, but we can help to clear that up. I think. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay. So, in, in reference to. Um, the, uh, the section where we're talking about the state uh, supplementing our, our funding by uh, 5.6 million uh, if we are to get the tax passed right the state is going to well on step number four in particular we mentioned expanding career pathways and credentialing opportunities for high school students okay. Yeah, okay, so, so it mentions credentialing opportunities for high school students uh, to prepare, prepare them for the, uh, for the workforce. And it, it includes STEM, the STEM program, in doing that. So does this indicate that we're going to be trying to institute STEM for the high school? Or uh, are we talking about overall STEM? We're there talking about... I mean, because it, it, it has to start before high school. The, state, the Department of Education has identified STEM, STEM pathways that are approved mm -hmm. by Bessie and Department of Ed, and those are the pathways that are referred to here as, as including STEM um, for, for individuals to get credentials in high school. <clears throat> and they start in high school. Okay, that's, so the STEM program, uh, and, and I understand because 
Hammond High has an excellent mm -hmm. technological uh, curriculum. But most of, the, most of the children that come from some of the feeder schools into <coughs> Hammond High are coming from, I mean, those schools are basically F schools. So in order to prepare those children coming out of GPA, um, Hammond uh, West Side, right? Uh, I mean, when we have to start the STEM program earlier so that those children have the pre-qualifications to be able to comprehend the, the, those courses that are being taken once they get to high school. A lot, of those, a lot of children who get into those curriculums don't stay there because they, they, they don't have the background. They don't have the prerequisite education to, to be able to substantiate you know, a grade that's high enough to keep them inspired enough to stay in those courses. So my question is, and, and, I, and, and the thing that brought the question up, when I saw STEM schooling in there, uh, it pretty much gave me hope that this is what we were doing, but I, I just need clarification on the uh, credentialing opportunities for high school students. Now, if we're going to start there, then we're already kind of setting those kids who are coming out of GPA, for, for setting them up to not succeed in that STEM program. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't agree that these are, this particular bullet number four is, a, is around pathways. There's particular courses in high school that a student would take in order to get credentialed, and there's a, also a, a, a licensing sort of credential test that they also take for this. So this is a little different than what's offered in elementary schools for STEM, even though I agree that your elementary STEM programs, you know, help lay a foundation so to speak. And many times students are interested uh, in those STEM programs beginning in elementary, which leads them into interest in high school. But the, this particular number four is talking about the to get credentialed at graduation, to be job ready for a job in a STEM pathway. And so there are particular ones that are approved by the state that we would do at the high school. And that's just including the STEM programs, not only STEM, but it includes that as well. Okay, so that explains, you know, you know, my, my um, that ex explains the inquiry that I had. Uh, it also amplifies the apprehension that I have about those kids coming out of Greenville Park Academy being able to uh, successfully navigate the coursework in a high school STEM program if they've not had any prerequisites for it. What I'm saying is I think that we should not just target, if we're gonna, if we're gonna use STEM, that we not, should not just target high schools, but that we should start it at a lower, at, at, the, at the junior high school level, at least. Well, I guess this would be the same as we offer pre-pharmacy like pre uh, or pharmacy tech credentialing or welding credentialing, and they do not have those, those classes in elementary, but they're able to successfully get their accreditation in high school. So I think the STEM would be the same. I don't think it's necessary for a student to have STEM background in elementary to be successful in the credentialing of jobs in the STEM fields. Okay, so what is, our, what is our success rate as far as the, 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 the uh, students who graduate from GPA going to Hammond High, what is our success rate for those students entering into those higher tech curriculums? I know that most of them choose to not get into IBM, I mean the, the, the IB program, the International Baccalaureate, uh, because of the extensive schoolwork that's done and, and the difference in the, um, the requirements of, of the curriculum, the, the coursework that has to be completed. Uh, they're just not prepared. The, the mindsets are just not there. So, uh, so expanding the STEM into at least the junior high school 
ranks would give those kids an opportunity to at least have the mindset um, of being able to do the coursework once they get mm -hmm. to Hammond High. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that they're at a disadvantage. And, uh, and like I said, and they are an F school. I'm sure that the concerns for the principals in both those schools is that <clears throat> introducing a STEM curriculum in the school is going to uh, increase the, the, the uh, the, uh, the workload on some of these students, uh, probably some of them to the point of despair. But if you never start it, then you never start, that improvement never starts. I mean, um, it, can be, it can be introduced as elective courses so that the students who cannot, you know, navigate those courses can choose regular classes, just like we do at Hammond High. And I mean, if we did, if all we had are those high-tech classes at Hammond High, those, you know, half the kids that come out of GPA would probably fail. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, I, I think that this should be expanded to include, not to include um, our schools in general and not just the high school. I think by that time it's too late for a lot of the students. So, uh, one thing, I, so the, um, we already provide funding to Greenville Park to implement a STEM program at that school through the dedicated magnet fund uh, tax dollars. Um, I, I know that they have, had, they have struggled actually using those dollars to successfully implement the program and the principal has explained some you know what his challenges were but I mean the funding is there as I understand it Miss Stilly so I, I don't know that saying that we're going to do additional funding to implement STEM at the at Greenville Park in this resolution does adds anything to that correct I, I would agree anyone else we vote on the amendment? We're, right, we already right. voted on the amendment. Now we need to vote on the motion. I think Ms. Stilley had some technical amendments that she wanted to add. Um, just on page two, uh, where we talk about the five um, things with the 5.6 million, number, item number two, before and after school programs, we, we would like to rebrand, instead of l using learning loss, uh, we would like to say to accelerate student learning and the the thinking behind that is that that even if there's learning loss we want to accelerate the student learning and if there's not student loss we still want to accelerate their learning so it would it would I think apply to a, a, a broader um, spectrum of students rather than just saying students with learning loss so the term we would like to, to sort of coin and use even for our summer camps and programs is uh, accelerate student learning. So no matter where you are, if, you, if you're if you below level, on level, or above level, we want to accelerate where you are. Okay. So that's, that's the only thing we'd like to. So move to amend that paragraph, uh, section one, uh, to, to read address, I'm sorry, section two, to provide before and after school programs to accelerate student learning and assist working mm -hmm. families. Yes. A Thank second. You. Okay, y'all just give me a second. Mr. Duncan made the motion and Ms. Dominguez seconded it. Ms. Cindy. And assist working families too, Ms. Stilley? It, it yes. It won't be just limited <coughs> to people that are working, correct? Right, no, it says and assist working families. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess, uh, yeah. So it, to accelerate student learning and assist working families. Okay. And that was motioned by who, Ms. Abrams? I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Duncan made the motion and Ms. Dominguez second. Um, 
online okay. vote online voting voting is open Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so we back. Uh, President, I, I, I would like to also move that we add the, uh, the wording that would include the other uh, lure, uh, the elementary schools, and, um, and um, considering the, the STEM proposition. Uh, because I, because I feel that it will not be done if we do not, you know, put this in word. If we do not include this, it will not be done. So I, I would, I would, I would uh, like to make a motion to include not just high schools, not just an opportunity for high schools, but for the, um, but that we, that, but that we establish prerequisites for the elementary schools that are feeding into the high schools as well. Mr. Moore, I, I wanted to add this, that a um, couple things. One is that, you know, I think we need to find out the extent that what we're doing with STEM now in our elementary schools. I think that the board would be probably pleasantly um, surprised at the amount of STEM activities we're doing. Secondly, um, we're planning to bring this to the board in the next few months, but we are planning to do summer camps for students who are interested that want to come. And part of that would be STEM uh, camps or STEM activities that are part of that. So um, part of our efforts is to promote STEM for our elementary grades by offering it uh, in the summer, like summer camps, where a portion of that is for STEM activities, in addition to what they're doing in the school year, uh, as well as accelerating their learning. Uh, and so we're working on that piece now. We'll be bringing that to the board. Just, just wanted to mention that. We are addressing and want to address uh, the availability of STEM in elementary schools for our kids. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so Mr. Moore, do you still want number four to read? You know, I would, I would, I would actually relent to us to a motion to have the superintendent do a uh, a study on wh whether or not we can successfully incorporate the STEM program at the uh, the elementary level. I would be um, satisfied with that for now. I I just want I just think that we need to do something to get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. I think it would prepare. I'm sorry. To conduct a study. Well, we. Would well, you well, that, 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 that's. I don't think this would have order. anything to do with the resolution. No. Well, Mr. Moore, I will commit to providing a report to the board in one of our upcoming meetings soon on the like where our, our elementary schools that currently do STEM, currently now, are robotics STEM, et cetera in their programs either during the school day or after school. So we, we can do that. I think we need to find out where we are before we plan our next step to help bridge the gap between elementary and high school as we plan out that. I mean, Mr. Duncan, if we, used to, if we took out the word high school and just put for students, would that defeat the purpose of what you're trying to do here? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Still is predominantly high school? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, that it's important that we, we do focus on expanding credentialing opportunities for high school students. Sure, I mean, I, I understand that, that, that for high school students, I, I totally agree with that. I'm, I'm in agreement. You know, um, that, that this, this will help prepare our seniors, our, our, our high school students for the workforce. Um, Can I'm, I'm, just concerned, I'm just concerned that the students who are going to be entering into the STEM into that st those those courses, those STEM courses, or the, the students that are coming out of the F schools and feeding into Hammond High are not going to be prepared to take those courses. Ms. Stilley, what if we added a sentence that said, to the extent necessary, this expansion of pathways will also include 
programs necessary to prepare students for taking advantage of these additional opportunities? I'm trying to figure something out. Yeah. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds pretty good. Keep thinking. Yeah, right. That's not simplistic. <laughs> it's not very simple, I know. I, can I just say something real quick? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just I understand trying what he's saying about the STEM, but in our DSEG uh, um, interim whatever plan, we have Montessori at one school. We have Magnet at, we have the communications magnet and we have stem that was our four things to attract people back to those schools so we physically um, mo monetarily cannot afford to put stem at every school we've already got montessori we've already got magnet we've already got communication and we've already got stem I i'm not sure how we could afford to do it well what we're doing um, rose is not working because those schools are still f schools what well, we're doing is not we're saying something something though. has to something has to change but their programs are different, STEM and they're mandated according to the interim and student assignment plan. I mean, but, that's what we agreed to do. But, it, but it's not working. That's my, that's, my, that's, my, that's my contention, is that it's not working. And we, so we need to do something different. Well, we do have the commitment, though, like she's saying, that you know, once the judge approves our, our new consent agreement, that we have committed that we will, to the extent necessary, improve and expand those magnet programs, including the STEM programs, um, you know, to the extent that we can do it. So that is a commitment we've already made and voted on and that we're hopefully any day now going to be ordered to, to move forward on once the, the judge approves that, that new final agreement. So I don't know if that addresses the concern or not. Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate that, Brett. I do. Um, but uh, what I have in front of me is, you know, uh, a possible $5.6 million that the state may be giving us if we pass this tax. So, uh, and, and that is why I feel that this is an appropriate time to address where those funds go. Well, and this will be $5.6 million that we don't have right now. And, and for each of these bullet points, I'm assuming that we, the administration is going to be bringing us a much larger and much more detailed proposal on exactly how all of these things will be implemented and, um, you know, that we, and we will get an opportunity to, to address it at that point. So, Ms. Stilley, question, like take number two, for example. Is it possible that these after-school programs, which doesn't say what grade level, could include STEM lessons and... Yeah, after school and summer. Yeah, after, and so it's, so yeah, it's, yeah, after yeah. school and summer could and um, could offer these things as well. Got you. Because you, one of the things we want to do is is attract students and and, and um, you know, encourage them to come to either before or after school summer programs. So, you know, it can't just be tutoring the whole time. There has to be some other things that get their interest. Um, and Jared, and so, I understand what you're yeah. saying, Jared. I think maybe in bullet point number two, Jared, that, that these after-school programs are for these families in summer after school maybe could address some of, some of the issue, additional educational needs for the children in your district that you're so concerned about. So we would be hoping that these children would be willing to give up their summer break to go to a STEM class that we could actually provide for them during the regular school session. Well, I was thinking more of after school programs, what it says here, student learning. Yeah, line. before or after some programs. Well, I, I feel you, man. I'm, we trying to, I want Mr. Duncan to come up with what he's thinking. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get the money first. Yeah, Once yeah, we that's the one thing. We, we, we don't have the money as of yet, to, but. <laughs> how to apportion it out. We can, we can spend it any way we want to. Once we get the money. Well, Chairman, just from what I've said, there's nothing in here to stop us from doing more programs at yeah. elementary schools to further education of STEM and every other kind of program to better our students. All right, I got it. But got if we it. don't pass this, if we don't get, you know, the money, we won't have to worry about any of them. <laughs> All right. All right. I, got, I got one. Can How I about we add number, in number five, mm -hmm. we add the word STEM, expand music, art, STEM and foreign language programs in our elementary schools. 
I just don't want to give the impression that we can do that in every single elementary school. Sure. I mean, I think it should be a, a choice of, uh, in other words, you may be a school that, that offers, you know, music and art, or you may do, you know, STEM and foreign language, or, you know, but to, to think, to put, to set up to say we can do all four of those in every single elementary, I think is, one, it's going to be well over the budget. Yeah, no, I think that's, um, that's fair. We're, but, but to the extent that we can expand those programs, I, I don't I mean, we're not saying that we're going to do all of them everywhere. I would second that. I would second yeah, that. I think so. Use okay. the word possible to the extent possible. To the extent I can do possible. that. To expand art, mm -hmm. to expand music. Um, this is going to be Mr. Moore's motion if he wants it on number five to expand music, art, STEM and foreign language programs in our elementary schools to the extent possible. Exactly. How's that, Mr. Moore? I mean, that's the next, that's the start. I second that motion. That's a start. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Jerry's going to make that motion, Miss Cindy. It's second by Mr. Bush. Okay, hold on. A friendly amendment, Mr. Moore. <laughs> instead of you, instead of elementary schools, we would say in our K through eight schools. Yeah, but you're not going to do this. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Okay. Can you make that work? I mean, okay. that is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is elementary. Yeah, well, but, yeah, but, yeah, I got it. Junior high. Yes, some of junior high. You got to be specific. Yeah, okay. All right, Miss Cindy, you have, you have it. Good job. You want to read it back to us? <laughs> I, oh, I will. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Motion to amend number five to read, expand music, art, foreign language, and STEM programs in our K through eight schools to the extent possible. Good. The motion good? is made by Mr. Moore and seconded by Mr. Bush. Mr. Bush. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, online voting. Voting is open. Mr. Stonebaugh, you didn't think this was gonna be easy, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's open. Voting is closed. I didn't think it was going to be that. Motion passes unanimously. <laughs> All right. Now, can I have a motion? No, we got. We already have a motion. Well, we had a motion. Okay. Question. We have a question call for. Vote motion call. to approve oh, yeah. as okay. amended. Call for the vote. We already had the motion. Okay, I done got lost. We've been so long ago. Well, wait. Say that. What you gonna say? Motion to approve as amended. Motion to approve as with all the amendments. The resolution. The resolution. So we need a vote. Do I need to I change the? There you go. Okay. Mr. Call. Duncan, Mr. Westmoreland, is that? Call the question. Yes. Okay. We're ready. Online voting is open. I, sh I shut mine. Yes. <laughs> Hold up, brother. <laughs> Make sure you put me up there. That's what you get for sure. <laughs> Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. All right. I have a question, Ron. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Snyderbot, when was the last time that we passed a tax, either property or sales, for increased salaries? For increased salaries? To increase salaries. I don't think we Ever? have. I, I, I've been here 25 years. I can't recall because I've been here since 01. I don't remember doing it. Maybe I no. just can't remember. Hasn't happened. So never, as far as you know. No, we renewed the second one since sales tax, but that wasn't dedicated to salaries. But we did get approval to renew that in 2007. Not done, right? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess the first sales tax penny was dedicated to facilities. It wasn't even for salaries and benefits. The first one or the second? Oh no, one? the first one. Yes, the one that's been approved. I don't know when that was approved. But that was like, yeah, I mean, that was way. 82? Way before 2000? No, that was before 82. That was the second yeah. one in 82. The first one was approved probably, I couldn't tell you. I'm looking around the room to see for Mr. Bellavia. He's not here. <laughs> it's before 2000. All right, before we end our meeting, if everyone could please, I know we're not going to do any um, closing comments, but if everyone could please keep um, Ms. Janice Richards and their, her, their prayers. Her brother passed away. And that's why she's not here tonight. So just keep Miss Richards and her family in your prayers at this time. If there's nothing else, meeting adjourned. <laughs>